Hello everyone, so we are in the week number four. Okay, and then here is bringing so hard, so I don't know if you uh, can hear me clearly, but uh, right now is uh, when you are here. So I don't know if it wants to be complicated uh, during the session, but I'm just saying that we are hoping to complete the session today because it's going to be the power right now. But we're going to start with this session. Um, in this case, we are going to begin the week number four. Then it's the last week uh, of this module. So we are going to end this. Um, this module in three days because um, taking this out, so we are going to have three more sessions and we are going to end this uh, module. Remember that you have to work on the platform because this is the last week. So um, if you are not complete with the platform, you need to do it this week. Because uh, the next week is uh, vacation, so uh, in that case, we are not going to have uh, more time to complete all the activities that you have on the platform. Así que recuerden que si no han completado las eh, tareas de la plataforma, tienen que completar las esta semana porque ya es la última semana del de curso y la próxima semana, por ser vacaciones, eh, ya no se va a estar trabajando en eso. Así que tienen que tener completa su plataforma para esta semana. Si no lo han hecho, si ya lo hicieron, excelente. So, uh, this is session number one of week number four. And we are going to have a couple of days to complete the first. So, we are going to begin right now. I don't know if we are going to have some trouble uh, with the connection. Uh, like I was saying, it's very so, so hard right now. So, we are going to begin, and we have a place like in the other week, uh, we we're doing uh, something like this, because I like to share some uh, faces with you at the beginning of the week. So, let me take this. Okay. It says, never lose hope. Success will reward your hard work. Maybe we are having like, some situation in our life in which we feel like the, we don't have that situation in our hands, or it's kind of complicated, and you know that if we keep working hard, we are going to complete all the activities, all the action, all the things that we want to complete for our life. So in that case, we never lose hope. That is the last thing that we lose. And you know that when you are at the end of the Past or your trouble, you are going to have your reward. So, in that case, you need to keep trying, you need to keep doing your job the best you can do. So, in that case, we need to work really, really hard to complete our uh, things in our life. And maybe it can be like very hard, but in some cases, you know that if you are not working enough for your thing, you are not going to feel really good with your work. In some cases, it's kind of easy. Life has both easy things, hard things. You know that you need to keep working.
working on their thing. And now we are going to see what are the topics that we are going to develop uh, this day, because we are going to have it today. That is the future census. We are going to talk about what are the core future census. Because you know that uh, in past and past and future, we have four. Four tenses that we are going to use when we are speaking in English. So in this case, we are um, we are going to see what are the four future tenses that we are going to use in in English. But maybe we know that uh, the use of will, the use of point to, but we are going to. Uh, have more knowledge about the four senses, and also we are going to know how to create these uh, senses when we are talking about uh, some situation in the future. And also we are uh, going to know in which situations we are going to use the different senses that we have in the future. Así que para hoy y probablemente para mañana, vamos a estar hablando de los eh, tiempos futuros, future senses porque tenemos cuatro. Así que lo más seguro es que lo dividamos en dos partes eh, para hoy para mañana, dos hoy por mañana. Pero vamos a ver estructuras, cómo utilizarlos, cuándo y todo eso. So in this case, we are going to have a lot of information in which we are going to know eh, how to use the sentences, the structure, some examples, and... At the end of the session, we are going to have an exercise. But in that case, it's just to answer some questions. Using the uh, future sentence. So, we are going to begin. And we know that, just like in past and present, there is more than one of future sense. This uh, change depends on the function and what we want to say. So in that situation, we know that we have four because we have different ways to tell something. So in that case, this sentence changes depending on the function and also what we want to say. In that case, remember that we have like a purpose of um, the uses of these senses. So in that case, we are going to know in which cases we are going to use, for example, the, the simple future, or in which cases we are going to use the future continuous and all of that. But we are going to know right now what is the um, thing that we are going to have for the four senses. So let's begin with the first one. All with the general information. And it says, um, we are going to write the general idea that we have about the future senses. So in this case, we are going to learn more about the four senses that we have here. And we have the following senses. We have future simple. We have future continuing. We have future perfect. 
Then we have future prostate cancer. Those are the four chances that we are going to develop uh, today and tomorrow. So, we are going to begin with the number one, that is the theater scene. In that case, we know that uh, somehow we can use the future symbol because um, it is not like, very complicated to understand that in that case, we are just going to use wheel. So, in that case, it's just like to remember all the information that we have about this thing. But in this case, we are going to see what are the uses, the form, and some centers in which we are going to put into practice the information that we have about the, the information. Así que vamos a ver diferentes partes que tienen que ver con, el, con la estructura, ¿verdad? Con el sitio físico. Vamos a ver que, cuáles son sus formas de oraciones, ¿verdad? En las que vamos a poner en práctica lo que es eh, la estructura. Cuáles son los usos. Y esa es la información. Vamos a hacerlo de esta manera por partes. Para ir entendiendo, ¿verdad? Cómo utilizar cada una de estas so we have number one, then it says future thinking. So in this case, it's saying that the future simple is used to talk about a time later than now, then can be used in lots of different ways. So in this case, we are talking about a time in the future or a time later than now. In that case, with some time, but it's not like kind of far away, but it is like in a different time in the future. So it's not like that is going to happen by now. In this case, when we use the real, it's an action that will not happen in this precise moment, but okay, in a certain time, right? Like five minutes, just to pass the time. So in that case, having like a long time. So we are going to see what are the forms or what is the form that we have for the future symbol. And we have here, it is made up of a degree wheel, one plus base infinity without En este caso, vamos a construir nuestras oraciones con will, utilizando ya sea positivo o negativo, will o one, y le vamos a agregar base infinity, la base one of the verb. En este caso, no le vamos a agregar two. En este caso, va a ser two cuando vamos a crear este tipo de oración. Entonces, 
then it says that because the wheel is a motor bird, it doesn't change depending on the person doing the action. Como es un verbo modal, un modal verb, en este caso no vamos a aplicar la regla de la tercera persona, como lo hemos hecho con otro tipo de verbos. Will es will para todos. He, she, it, we, you, they, I, you, whatever eh, person that you are using, you are going to use will for every person that we are going to use. Así que en este caso no vamos a agregarle este al final de will, no vamos a, a cambiar nada. Es el mismo para todas las personas que nosotros utilizamos en la oración. As, um, when we are uh, working with verse to be, we also have the construction. Uh, when we are using uh, this structure, so in this case, when we are using we, we can use it like this. We can use the construction of we. I will, I will. So in that case, we can use construction also with this structure. Then we have in the negative, we can also use will not or for more emphasis, once. In that case, because um, we are going to use once, but if you want to write will not, it's good also. We know that a negative is just one, but in this case, if you want to make like more emphasis, you are going to write will not. And both uses are okay. So it's depending on the way you are going to represent your words and your ideas. Así que si queremos hacer oraciones negativas, podemos utilizar ambos. One, o podemos utilizar will not. And it's okay with uh, both users. And it says that when we are writing, it's very to use will not because it sounds more like formal, but it won't. It's more used or more common in a speech is when we are talking. That kind of construction and that kind of uh, words is very to use it when we are uh, speaking. But when we are writing, it's like we are going to use the more formal way to represent the idea. Así que si vamos a utilizar el one, que sea más que todo eh, cuando hablamos, porque es como más común hacerlo en la, en la forma hablada que en la escrita. Cuando escribimos algo, pues vamos a utilizar como la forma más larga, ¿verdad? más formales para representar nuestras ideas. Pero en el escrito es como un poco más casual. And in the last one, it says, in short answer to say. In this case, it's the way in which we are going to answer.
Yeah. This case I buy X because it is representing uh, the person. I, you, he, she, and all of those things. So in that case, it's depending on the person that you are answering. So in that case, it is necessary to learn. Así que para respuestas cortas simplemente decimos sí. I will, yes, you will, yes, he will, yes, he will, etc. O en negativo, no, I want, no, she wants, no, he wants, and all of that things. Because in that case, it's short and short. So now we are going to see the examples. Oh, positive sentence, negative sentence, and in questions. How can we use this structure to uh, form sentences and question and all of the things? So we are going to have like a table. So in that case, we are going to see the example and how we can apply this structure to form sentence in positive, negative, and so let's see. So here we have positive, negative, and question. So we're going to begin with positive. We are going to write all the person that we know that is the subject, all the pronouns. I, you, he, he, it, I mean, it, we, I mean, you, and they. And we are going to have it the same here. I, you, now we are going to construct the uh, the structure that we are going to follow for this example. We have the uh, the subject, and then we are going to use we in this case because we are not going to have it in negative. In that case, we are going to uh, do it in the second space. I will, and then we are going to use the base um, form of the verb without to. In that case, we are going to use the word or the verb travel. So, I will travel. And that's it. Voy a viajar. When? Maybe in two months, the next year, in three years. That's the other thing. So, we have the first sentence. We're going to complete the other ones with the same structure. So, we'll double. He will double. So, in that case, you can see that we are not changing anything in the structure because we are not going to apply the rule for the other person in this case. Because this auxiliary verb doesn't need any change. So, in negative, we are not going to use the will not. We can use it like in the first example. I will not travel, but in this case, we are going to use one. He one travel. He one again without saying yes. He one. He one. We won. Mm 
And for questions, you know that when we are creating questions, we need to change a little bit the position of the ones. So in this case, we are going to use the wheel, the oscillator wheel, at the beginning of the sentence. Then we are going to have the subject, and at the end, we are going to have the verb and the question mark. So here we have will I double. Will you travel? Will he? Will he? Will it? Will we? Will you and will they? Así que con esta oración es bastante corta, bastante simple. Podemos ver cómo eh, usar las estructuras, ¿verdad? De el will. Tenemos en la positiva que obviamente, ¿verdad? Eh, utilizamos el subject. El verb will, o en este caso el auxiliary verb will, luego el verbo without to, que es el base form. Y en este tipo de oraciones podemos incluir nosotros un complemento más extenso, claro que sí lo podemos hacer, pero básicamente esa es como la estructura base de nuestras oraciones. Luego en los negativos, si nos fijamos, podemos utilizar ambos. Will not or want, que es lo mismo. Solo que want es la construction of will not. Pero igual, podemos agregarle un complemento más largo a nuestra oración si no la queremos dejar así de corta. And in the question, we know that in, in all the questions or maybe in many of the questions that we can make, we are going to change the position of the word. Así que eso es algo bastante usado y que ya nosotros sabemos que en muchos de los casos vamos a, a cambiar el, la posición de algunos de los elementos de la oración cuando hacemos una pregunta. So, we have like just one verb in that case. You know that we are using the structure. So in that case, you have complete the structure for um, all of the persons that you have. So in that case, if you don't want to use the pronoun, you can use a uh, proper pronoun. In, in, it's okay. So now we are going to see what are the uses for uh, the future simple. ¿Cuáles son los usos que nosotros le damos al eh, futuro simple. Vamos a ver cuáles son esos usos que nosotros le damos. Because we can uh, think that we have just one um, use for this structure, but in that case we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven uses for future simple. Tenemos siete usos que vamos a ver en este momento del futuro simple. ¿Cómo lo podemos utilizar y no es simplemente para hablar del futuro? We are going to see. So we have here you said, and we are going to begin with the first one. It says instant or spontaneous decision. Para eh, decisiones instantáneas o espontáneas. Cosa que no pensé, cosa que sentí y la voy a hacer. So, how can we create sentences with this uh, instant or a spontaneous decision? Let's see. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. 
I think I will make a sandwich. So in that moment, I am feeling hungry. And I decide that I need to eat something. So in that case, and we are making instant or a spontaneous decision based on the things that I am feeling. Estoy decidiendo hacer algo de manera instantánea o espontánea, dependiendo de cómo me estoy sintiendo en este momento. ¿Cómo me siento en este momento? I'm hungry. Me siento hambriento. So, I decide that I will make a sandwich. Puede ser que me coma el sandwich o puede ser que en el momento cambie de decisión. Pero sé que quiero comer algo porque me siento hambriento. So, next, we have the second one. <clears throat> we have future predictions based on a belief. Future predictions based on a belief. Esto es tener predicciones futuras basadas en, un, una, en una creencia, en algo que nosotros creemos. No estamos hablando de, de cosas religiosas, sino en algo que nosotros creemos sobre una situación. So in that case, if I am believing something, I can make a future prediction about a, a specific situation. And we have an example for that. And it says, I'm sure you will pass the exam. I'm sure you will pass the exam. Yo estoy segura de que vas a pasar el examen. Yo creo eso. So it's my belief. So in that case, I am making future predictions based on a belief. Next, we have number three. And it says, from it says, we are going to use a simple a future a, for making promises. Vamos a hacer promesas utilizando el future, simple, simple future. And it says, I won't tell anyone your secret. I won't. Tell anyone your secret. No le voy a decir a nadie tu secreto. Estoy haciendo una promesa para el futuro. No le voy a decir a nadie que me contaste esto, ¿verdad? Pues aquí, cambies. And then we have offers. And it says, I will carry your bag for you. I will carry your bag for you. Imagine that you are talking with a friend, or you are talking with a partner, you are talking with your sisters and brothers, and you are telling them that you are going to uh, go to the supermarket and you are going to uh, buy a lot of things. So in that case, when you are um, talking with the people, maybe one of them say this phrase, I will carry your best for you. Voy a cargar tus bolsas por ti. So in that case, esa persona está haciendo una oferta. Si me llevas al super, voy a cargar las, las bolsas por ti. Podemos usarlo de esa manera también. Another one. It's 
says require. In este caso estamos pidiendo, verdad, algo. So in that case, we are asking for something. In this case, we have the example. Will you tell Henry I call? Will you tell Henry I call? Le podría decir o le, le puede decir a Henry que llame. Then we have red. son amenazas, cosas malas, ¿verdad? In this case, it's telling, if you do that again, I will tell mom. Es, es como amenazar, pero en este caso, en, en el ejemplo, es como, si haces algo malo, si lo vuelves a hacer, le voy a decir a mamá. But in that case, it's not like that talk. In that case, it's telling about bad things also. And the last one is future fact. And in this one, future fact, we can say, I will be back later tonight. In este caso son eh, cosas que sí son seguras que van a pasar, no cosas que eh, probablemente no terminen de suceder. En este caso sí son cosas seguras que van a pasar, como en el ejemplo, I will be back later tonight. Yo estoy segura de que voy a estar de regreso tarde en la noche. Sí podrían haber situaciones, ¿verdad? Eh, que estén fuera de nuestro control, que no nos permitan eh, hacer las acciones que decimos, pero eso está muy por fuera de nosotros, pero nosotros estamos seguros de que va a suceder. So in that case, I will be back later tonight. And it says that also when we are using this structure that is the future simple, we can use another word that is not will. We can use shall in that case because it is referring to the same thing. So here, we can use shall instead of will. For future time reference, But in this case, we are going to use it with I and with we. I and we. And it is slightly more formal than we. So in that case, when you are going to use, or you are going to have like, a uh, very, very formal conversation or something like that, you can use shall instead of will. And we have an example. It says, we shall never forget this beautiful day. So in that case, it's the, the information that we have about the, um, the future simple. Now we are going to see the number two, that is the future continuous. 
So we're going to see what are the uses and what are the uh, examples and the structure that we have about about the uh, things that we need to know about the future continue. So number two. And this one, it says that we use this sense to talk about things in progress. Things in progress at a particular time in the future. En este tiempo vamos a hablar eh, de lo que es, ¿verdad? El future continuous, que estamos hablando de cosas en progreso, cosas que no han terminado eh, y que probablemente lleguen a terminar en algún tiempo en el futuro. So in that case, something that uh, begins in the present and it is going to end in the future, we can say. And what is the form? It says that we have will and one. Will and one plus B plus ING form. Estamos hablando de, de eh, futuro continuo o por, progresivo. Que ya sabemos, ¿verdad? Que es, es cuando aplicamos el ING o el, eh, o el gerundio a lo que es el verbo. So, in that case, we're going to do that form again in this case, because we're going to use the ING form of the verb. So, we're going to have um, the table again in which we are going to see the uh, structure in the different uh, persons that we have, the different subjects that we have. So in that case, we can see how to create sentence in positive, negative, and questions with this structure. Así que vamos a ver los ejemplos de cómo hacemos las oraciones en positivo, negativo, y en pregunta, utilizando esa estructura del will, one, plus b, plus ing, form. So again, we have we have the table in which we are going to write the examples. C9. Again, positive, negative, and question. And here we have I, you, him, shame, it, we, you, and they. And we are going to apply the structure. So let me take this like this because we are going to see the structure. So I, then we are going to write wheel. I will, and we are going to write B, not the is, um, and are. In this case, it's B. I will be, and we are going to uh, write the verb with the ing form. In this case, work with the ing that is working. I will be working. In this case, no es que vamos a utilizar el verbo to be como el is, um, and are sino que en este caso sí vamos a escribir el be como tal. I will be working. You will be working. He will be working.
Then for negative ones, again, I J. Okay, negative. Next, we are going to write one. Again, one. And then we are going to uh, uh, complete the sentence. The working. last one that is the question in this case again we are going to write will at the beginning of the sentence and then we know that we are going to write the pronoun and the complement will i be working will you be working And the last one we are they. And for the last part of the future continuous, we are going to see the uses. What are the uses of these stands like we were uh, seeing the uses for the simple future. So in this case, we're going to see the uses for these structures. And we have the use number one, and it says, an action in progress at a specific time in the future. So in this case, we're going to see, or we are going to use this structure for an action in progress at a specific time in the future. Vamos a hablar de acciones en, en progreso en un tiempo específico en el futuro. Quiere decir que puede que haya comenzado en este preciso momento y se esté llevando a cabo hasta cierta hora en el futuro. And we have the example, and it says at 5 p.m. This time tomorrow, in two weeks, in 
in five years time. And we have a sentence and it says, this time tomorrow, I will be flying to Barbados. Then we have number two. And it says, an action we see as new or temporary. In this case, we're going to talk about an action that is not going to long um, a lot of time. In este caso, son actividades que lo vemos como algo temporal. No es algo que vaya a durar mucho tiempo. En este caso, es algo que va a pasar rápido. So, in that case, we have And we have the example. I will be working for my dad until I find I find a new job. So in this case, it's something that is not going to, uh, maybe you are not going to have that situation all the time. In that case, uh, you are going to be working with your dad because in that case, you don't have a, a job right now, but you are going to keep um, searching a new job. So when you have, that new opportunity, you are not going to work with your dad. So in that case, it's something new or temporary. Así que en ese caso también estamos utilizando este tipo de futuro, que es el futuro continuo para hablar de situaciones temporales en las que sabemos que no vamos a estar todo el tiempo, pero que eh, por el momento lo vamos a hacer mientras encontramos algo más. Next one. It says, prediction or guesses about future events. En este caso vamos a hacer como adivinar, tratar de adivinar algún evento en el futuro, alguna predicción que tengamos nosotros del futuro. O sea, en este caso no es algo que en realidad vaya a pasar tal cual nosotros lo hemos eh, dicho, sino que en este caso solo vamos a tratar de eh, creer que va a suceder. And we have the example, and it says, he will be coming to the party, I guess. So in that case, maybe you invite someone to the party, and you are thinking that maybe that person is going to come to the fight, but you are not sure that it's going to appear at that place. So in that case, you are making a guess or a prediction that this person is going to be on the party. Así que en ese caso, verdad, solo estamos haciendo una predicción de si esa persona va a estar o no estar en la Yes, so in that case, you are talking about, I guess, or a prediction. Then we have prediction about the present. In this case, we are talking about future, but also 
we can make this kind of prediction about the present because we are not in the same place as the people while they are doing some action. So in that case, you are not sure that this is going to happen in that specific time in the present. Maybe it's going to happen in some time in the future. But it, uh, it is like a, a future that is going to happen right in a couple of minutes or something like that. So prediction about the present. And we have the example and it says, she will be getting married right and now I imagine. En este caso, donde hacemos predicciones acerca del presente, pero que tiene que ver con el futuro. Porque estamos diciendo, ella se va a casar en este momento. Me imagino. No sabemos exactamente cuál es el momento en el que ella se va a casar. Sino que simplemente estamos diciendo de que tal vez se está casando en este preciso momento o en un par de minutos o no sabemos en, con exactitud cuándo. Por eso hacemos predicciones acerca del presente, pero que influyen en el futuro. And the last one, that is, that is the polite inquiries. En este caso es como eh, tratar de deducir que va a pasar algo, ¿verdad? De una manera muy respetuosa. Because in the example we have, we do be joining us for dinner nos vas a hacer compañía para la cena es como queriendo saber verdad este tipo de información pero de manera más respetuosa and we have the example will you be joining for dinner. And we have the uses of this structure or this tense. In this case, we have just five. And in the other one, we have seven. So it's, it's OK. So now we are going to see the last part because it's almost time to end this session. But we are going to see something very, very important that is something that we need to remember. And it says that it is important to remember that some verbs cannot be used in continuous sense. These are the stative verbs. They describe a state, feelings, thoughts, and opinions. So in that case, when we have the stative verbs that are talking about the feelings, that are talking about the state, thoughts, and opinions, we are not going to use uh, the uh, continuous. In that case, we are going to use the simple. And this is for um, every continuous tense that we have. Así que cuando tengamos steady verbs, no vamos a utilizar el continuo, ya sea presente, pasado o futuro, porque no se pueden utilizar. Um, más que todo aquellos que hablan de sentimientos, de estados, um, de pensamientos y opiniones. So we are going to have this information here.
So in that case, it's something just to remember. So now we are going to end this session number one of the week number four. And we're going to see each other tomorrow with the last two parts of the theater census. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow in session number two. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night.